Melissa Jira Grant, playing the whore, the work of sex work. Welcome to the intriguing world of Playing the Whore, the Work of Sex Work by Melissa Jira Grant. This summary will shed light on the complex and often misunderstood domain of sex work. Touching on crucial issues such as the mistreatment of sex workers by authorities, the progress and challenges faced by the sex workers movement, and the lack of representation for individuals in the industry, this summary aims to provide clarity on the realities of sex work in contemporary society. Be prepared to challenge your preconceived notions as we delve into an engaging exploration of the dynamics of this controversial profession. The truth about police and prostitutes. Society often oversimplifies complex issues like the relationship between police and prostitutes. While police are assumed to protect all citizens, the reality is more complicated. In fact, police harassment and violence often make sex workers' lives more dangerous. A survey by the Sex Workers Project found that over two-thirds of sex workers in New York City are harassed by police, and 30% received violent threats from officers. When sex workers try to report crimes, they are often ignored or dismissed. Shockingly, the same survey found that 14% of prostitutes interviewed in NYC were victims of police violence. The problem extends beyond NYC, in West Bengal, a survey of 21,000 sex workers showed that most violent attacks on prostitutes were committed by police, not clients. This information challenges the commonly held belief that clients pose the greatest risk to sex workers. Society needs to recognize these unjust practices and work towards protecting vulnerable populations. The Evolution of Prostitution Prostitution, once a last resort, has evolved over the years. The sexual liberation of the 1960s was a turning point for the sex industry, leading to positive depictions in pop culture and the birth of the sex workers' movement. Today, international bodies such as the United Nations and the International Labour Organization support the decriminalization of sex work and advocate for the protection and benefits of sex workers. Sex workers' voices go unheard. Sex workers are rarely consulted in debates about prostitution, and their voices are often dismissed or ignored. Intellectuals, politicians, and moral leaders dominate the conversations, leading to laws that do not consider the perspective of those in the industry. For example, Sweden's anti-prostitution law was passed without consulting sex workers, making the profession riskier and further marginalizing those involved. In order to truly improve the working conditions of sex workers, their opinions must be taken into account. The Risks of Criminalizing Prostitution Prostitution Criminalization and Its Implications The lives of prostitutes under the protection of matrons or headmistresses in brothels of the past were far from perfect, but today's sex workers have it even worse when prostitution is illegal. Escort agencies force their workers to sign contracts forbidding sexual intercourse with clients to avoid criminal accountability, leaving prostitutes vulnerable with little protection. This legal loophole prevents agencies from creating policies that could safeguard employees when dealing with clients, ultimately placing all liability onto sex workers. Furthermore, a woman could be suspected of being a sex worker by having in her possession condoms, leading to her arrest and invasive searches of her possessions. Ironically, this discourages actual prostitutes from using protection during sexual encounters, making their work even more dangerous by exposing them to sexually transmitted infections and unwanted pregnancies. In conclusion, criminalizing prostitution is morally hypocritical and puts sex workers in great danger while providing them with little protection. It results in agencies prioritizing their reputation over the health and well-being of their employees while allowing law enforcement to perpetrate harmful stereotypes that lead to discrimination of any woman who has multiple sexual partners. Visibility versus safety in society's attitude towards prostitution. Society is more concerned with the visibility of prostitution than the safety of sex workers, according to a book on sex in our society. Many states have tried to suppress sex ads, but laws were withdrawn as they were broadly worded that they also targeted other legal online speech. Sex workers have the right to advertise, 
but society somehow feels that prostitution should not be visible as it might corrupt moral values. To deal with this, the Village Voice recently stopped publishing ads featuring the fully naked bodies of women, and now requires sex workers to post ads using a simple headshot photo that shows their face. However, sex workers prefer anonymity, and interested clients are inclined toward seductive nude pictures. Society needs to focus more on ensuring sex worker safety and their rights than on suppressing prostitution ads, according to the law. Sex Positivity versus the Oppression of Women In the TV show Sex and the City, we see how society tends to pass negative judgments on women with a highly active sex life despite a minor advancement of a sex-positive attitude towards women in pop culture. This judgmental view is strongly linked to people's attitude towards sex workers. Such an attitude justifies victim-blaming and is reinforced when women categorize other women as either wholesome or whorish. However, labeling someone as a slut or a whore may actually mean that person is sexually liberated, rejecting the oppressive notion that women must be virtuous. Rejecting such old-fashioned ideas is just one way to be sexually liberated. Women can make their own decisions regarding their sexuality, including whether to use their sexuality to earn money, and deserve respect for those decisions. The Slut Walk protest advocates for the right of sexual freedom and the choice of clothing without being shamed. Elaborating Sex Work Sex work is not always about victimhood or being exploited. Some sex workers are in control and have the final say in the services they offer. Clients, in some cases, play the submissive role, willingly tied up or restrained. Sex work is not just a means of survival but a potential entrepreneurial venture. In conclusion, Playing the Whore, the Work of Sex Work, offers a thought-provoking and insightful look into the complexities of the sex work industry. It highlights the vital issues such as the mistreatment of sex workers by police authorities, the legal challenges faced by those in the profession, and the often disregarded perspectives of the sex workers themselves. Through this informative book summary, we've learned that the world of sex work is far from black and white and that it is crucial for society to acknowledge and address the industry's unique challenges. By understanding these complexities, readers can better appreciate the multifaceted nature of sex work and the need to protect the rights and well-being of those involved in this profession.